क्योंकि सैलरी इसका सो इट्स ऑलमोस्ट वन टेन ओके सो सो आई होप आई एस एंड साइंस गाइस आर हियर सो सो इन टुडे लेक्चर वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस दिस एच एम एम राइट सो सो आई हाउ दिस इन लाइक वेरी एब्सट्रैक्ट लेवल सो okay so basically so suppose there are two people eh okay? suppose uh, you know this guy so we refer this as like uh, she is a uh, bob and uh, she is sheila right so there are two people right eh? so then they are dating right so <coughs> so bob has some uh, serious issue right like uh, when uh, when the sheila in uh, sunny day sheila like to eat like uh, ice creams right then uh, in so <coughs> so bob noticed this and he you know when uh, sheila eating ice cream probably in uh, sheila's uh, area which is sunny right so they are con- contacting through phones right so they are living in two different places right <coughs> then uh, If it is rainy, then uh, Sheila like to eat uh, chocolates. Then uh, when uh, Sheila calls and tell, uh, so I'm eating chocolate. Then probably uh, Bob's know that uh, there are probably raining on uh, her area, right? So <coughs> then, like uh, you know, like this is not a hundred percent prediction, right? So girls are confusing also. Then uh, there is some. other options too right so like uh, when in sunny days uh, most probably uh, 80% after 80% uh, she will like to eat ice creams right so then uh, right 80% then uh, 20% she like to eat chocolates in even in uh, sunny days right then in uh, rainy days uh she the like to eat uh, uh chocolate 60% right 40% she like to eat uh, ice creams right so these are the probabilities right <coughs> then uh, suppose uh, okay now uh, she like eating ice cream on one day right then uh, bob no probably there is sunny environment then uh, she eating chocolate in next day so bob keep uh, note down these things right so bob no- notice that uh, probably uh, rainy on that uh, sheila area then in the next day uh, eating chocolate then pro- uh, bob know <coughs> she uh, in her areas probably raining right like that suppose uh, sheila's uh, eating pattern will be look like this right so in uh, monday she eating uh, ice creams tuesday chocolates wednesday ice cream like that right then uh, so the bob is a uh, curious guy right so he like to note these things down right so so she uh, so she uh, he tracking these things right so in his prediction right he found that uh, if uh, like so he know that uh, if uh, she is eating ice cream then probably sunny day no? right like that uh, he noticed this down right by looking at these right so monday is sunny then uh, tuesday again rainy in uh, wednesday again sunny uh, thursday again rainy like that right so so this is like uh, if we, this is not the actual pattern right so like uh, so this uh, this uh, pattern can, cannot be a 
a practical one, right? <coughs> so there are some uh, other things also, right? Like this, right? Suppose uh, now uh, we are now these these things up to now, right? In the sunny days, uh, like eighty percent ice cream. In the rainy days, sixty percent chocolate, right? Then uh, some other factors too. In it's not like a uh, hundred percent uh, accuracy, right? Uh, if it is sunny, right? So the next uh, the next day will be a sunny day. Uh, the probability is eighty percent, right? Not hundred percent, right? So there may be some changes. Then uh, if today is a sunny day, so the next day will be a rainy day. So the probability will be around twenty percent, right? Like that. There are <coughs> if today is a rainy day, probably next day is a rainy day. Our prediction value is up to sixty percent, right? Like that. There are some uh, probability values, right? Then. Uh, So we call this uh, we call this is uh, as a hidden Markov model, right? So in here, right? So these are the uh, observations, right? So these are the observations, right? So these things are observed by the Bob, right? Right? So these are the behavior of Sheila, right? So these uh, uh, <coughs> her behaviors are observed by Bob, right? So he know that uh, around uh, eighty percent uh, there is a probability of eighty percent she eating ice cream on a sunny day, right? Like that, there are several uh, probability values, right? Then suppose they they are maintaining a distance uh, long distance relationship, right? So, so Bob can't actually uh, observe the weather forecast, right? So he tried to infer those uh, he, uh, areas weather by looking at these uh, observations, right? By looking at the, what she eating, right? So we call these uh, weather forecast as hidden states, right? That's why we call it hidden Markov model, right? So the, these things are hidden from the observation, right? These are uh, to his status, right? So these things are hidden, right? So Bob try to infer these status by looking at these, uh, what she eating, right? Right. So this is the hidden mark of model, <coughs> right? Uh, so in our context, we try to, uh, like, uh, I'll get into those things later. Like we, so. In our case, we want to have a, we we have some sort of a DNA sequence, right? So by looking at this uh, DNA sequence, we try to label label the our DNA sequence, right? Suppose this is our observation, like ATCJ values, right? This is our observation. Then based on this uh, observation, we try to uh, label these some uh, our DNA sequence, right? So we can have a label like this is label one, label two, like then we try to label by looking at this observation, right? So is it key? Is it clear? <coughs> IS people, is it clear? So we try to actually uh, like uh, we try to uh, make a model, right? So to make a model that showed this uh, observation, right? So we, based on this observation, we try to predict the status like that. <coughs> Is it okay? Okay. <coughs> right. So now we call this as a hidden mark of model, right? Then, uh, in uh, if we take only the this uh, transition, right? We call this as a transition probabilities, right? There are two two status, right? So one is a sunny day, one is a rainy day, right? If uh, today is a sunny day, so next day will be a rainy day by uh, twenty percent, right? If today is a sunny day, uh, next day will be a sunny day by eighty percent, right? Like that, 
these things we call it as a transition probabilities right <clears throat> we have to states these states are changing right so the probabilities are these values right then uh, then these things are we call it as uh, emission probabilities right so what it means actually suppose uh, today is uh, sunny day right so what is the probability uh, if it is uh, sunny day so it is given like so today is a sunny day so what is the uh, probability that uh, she will eat ice cream right so this is that is uh, 80% right <clears throat> so so suppose uh, so suppose you have some sort of uh, okay i'll give uh, okay so you guys know that uh, coding and coding on the in a sequence right yes or no coding and coding thing So you guys don't know what is coding and non-coding on a DNA sequence. <clears throat> is it yes or no? Buddhi, is it, you don't know what is a coding and non-coding? No, sir, I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> so I think that will be we'll have to cover on the previous lectures. We'll see, right? So basically, I'll get into what is coding. Is it like something happened in protein synthesis? Sorry, I didn't get you. Sir, protein synthesis. Oh, I get that. I get that. you know that coding and uncoding right so suppose this is a label right so we'll uh, so we'll take a label like x y z right so this is just a label right in this label under this label we have our uh, values like atcj values sir right? then like uh, like emission probability means suppose you are in a label like x right so what is the probability that that a will be uh, available on this uh, x label right so in uh, x area in suppose this is our x area x label right so what is the probability that a will be occur right so that is the uh, emission probability right so in uh, in this case suppose <coughs> we are on a sunny day right what is the probability that she will eat ice cream right so that is the emission probability so these things are we call it as emission probabilities right so the previous one based on the states right so so the states can be changed right so that is we call it as transition probabilities so states are changing we call it as transition so the, we uh, so those are those probabilities are <coughs> refer as transition probabilities then in the, in the one state so what is the probability of Happen, uh, occurring something like eating ice cream or whatever like that, right? In our DNA sequence, we uh, we call it as uh, suppose we are in like coding or non-coding or like X kind of a label, right? So what is the probability of having A on that label, right? In that area, so that is the emission probability, right? So is it clear? So is it okay? <clears throat> then uh, 
Suppose you are having a, like a, how to find transition probabilities, right? Suppose you have you have something like a, like this a sequence, right? So four sunny days, then three rainy days, four sunny days, two rainy days, three sunny days, right? Then uh, so how to calculate the transition probabilities, right? So we are calculating like this, right? So we uh, calculate all the transition from uh, sunny day to sunny day, right? We are having one here, the one, one, right? We are having three here, <coughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Like that we uh, calculate in transition from one state to another, right? So in so this is from sunny day to sunny day, right? Like that uh, we can calculate for sunny day to rainy days also, right? Like that we calculating, uh, so this is a sunny day to rainy day, we have one here. Again, uh, sunny day to rainy day, one here, right? <coughs> like that uh, we can calculate. So the uh, probability values will be look like this. So we can calculate same for the uh, rainy days, right? So from uh, rainy days to sunny day, one here. Again, one here, right? We are having two uh, rainy days to sunny day transitions. Then uh, one rainy day to rainy day transition, three three transition, one here, one, two, three, like that, right? So <clears throat> like this, we can calculate our transition probabilities. In our DNA sequence, probably uh, they will give the transition probabilities. What are the transition probabilities, right? So this, uh, this, uh, so this, these values will be uh, given by the given in the exam, right? In uh, DNA sequences. Right? These these things are for your information. That just to know how to calculate these things, right? <coughs> so, so if we put those values here, so this, we can build this uh, model. So these are the transition probabilities, right? So now hidden mark of model. Then uh, how to find the emission probabilities, right? Suppose uh, you are having this kind of a sequence, right? And you have you want to calculate the emission probabilities, right? So, <clears throat> what is the uh, probability of uh, that Sheila will uh, eat uh, ice cream on a sunny day, then uh, ice cream on a rainy day, right? Then uh, chocolate on a rainy day, then. Uh, chocolate on a sunny day, right? So we, we want to find the emission probabilities for these four things, right? <clears throat> so these things are also uh, given on your exam paper, right? This value will be given, right? Then you can, you can, you just have to use those values and do the calculation. Right? So if we calculate these values, if you find these values, the values will be look like this. Right, so you can count all the uh, ice cream uh, occurring on a sunny day, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So there are eight occurrences. Then for uh, chocolate on a sunny day, one, uh, two, right? Only two, right? So we can calculate the our emission probabilities, right? Then for uh, so rainy days, if we Count ice cream on a rainy one, two, right? We have two here. Then uh, chocolate on uh, rainy days, one, two, three, right? So we have count our values, then we can calculate the probabilities, right? So these things will be given on your exam paper, right? So is it okay? <coughs> So I think it will be better you can uh, if you, if you speak up, right? Hey, sorry, uh, how that probabilities have come like zero point eight and zero point two? Ah, uh, no, it's it's just a simple calculation, right? We uh, we have a uh, we based on this this only based on these two, right? So we calculate uh, all the eight plus two. These are the all the uh, emissions on sunny days. Then uh, divide by Eight, so we have eight uh, 
ice creams on sunny days, right? So eight divided by ten, so that is point eight, right? Like that simple calculation, right? That's why I didn't mention it. <laughs> okay, is it okay? Okay. Right? So, so that that thing will be same for the previous one also. If you confuse, so in here we. Uh, <clears throat> So in here we uh, get all these two values together, right? We have ten. Then uh, eight occurrences for eight transition from sunny days to sunny days, right? So that is point eight. So this one for point two. If we consider these uh, these two, right? In uh, rainy days to sunny days, rainy days to rainy days, right? We are having a uh, five total five occurrences, right? Then. Uh, so rainy days to sunny days two right so that's mean point four right like that uh, we can simply do do, do that maths right <clears throat> yeah, is it okay 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 then, uh, so we now uh, know how to find the emission probabilities then uh, so this is our hidden mark of model so we put those values, emission probabilities and the transition probabilities, right? So these things are emission probabilities and these things are transition probabilities, right? So this is our model, right? So we use this model to like uh, infer, like decode the Sheila's behavior, right? So if Sheila eating uh, chocolate on one day, ice cream on one day, right? We try to, based on the, those observation, we try to infer what is the weather forecast, right? So, so even uh, suppose she eating uh, uh, chocolate on Tuesdays, right? So the Wednesday she uh, Wednesday mean ne next day she eating ice cream, right? So we try to find the what is the weather forecast, right? Based on these two observations, right? We try we try to find what in uh, Tuesday what will be the uh, it is a sunny day or a rainy day, right? Like that we try to uh, infer like uh, some something like. Uh, <coughs> decoding or something like that, right? Suppose, is, is it like a decoding thing? So, so that will be more familiar. No? So we try to infer based on this observation, what is the focus? So these things are hidden from uh, Bob uh, observ observation level, right? Bob by in a, Bob in a different area, Alex in a different area, right? So the only observation uh, Bob can see is what, what she eating, right? Based on this uh, observation, he try to uh, infer what is what will be the uh, <coughs> weather weather forecast for that that day, right? Like that. So when she eating uh, ice cream, she, uh, the Bob try to find what will be the uh, this uh, her areas weather, right? Weather forecast, right? So that's the basic idea, right? <coughs> so is it okay? So I think these uh, hidden mark of models will be covered on like. Uh, first two years for CS guys, I think, like I think like for IS people, so this will be a first impression, right? So for like, uh, so we, we in our paper, we just have to do some calculation and uh, do the math like, so if you didn't get this, uh, how it's worth, it's fine, right? So you <laughs> just need to have, know how to uh, do your uh, question, right? How to write answers for the past paper, like uh, your uh, exam paper, right? So, okay then. So then this thing, right? Uh, so these things are simple uh, mathematics, right? So, so we have, uh, so how to find the given date is a sunny day or a rainy, like, uh, May may mukad to sekadana getama head the tail the kilaba no getama, right? So we are, we are having uh, some sort of a sequence, right? So we are having a uh, four, eight, uh, ten uh, sunny days and five rainy days. To, so, uh, so what will be the uh, <coughs> probability of uh, having a sunny day or a rainy day, right? So we can just uh, simply do the <coughs> calculation like this, right? We are having total 10 number of uh, sunny days, five rainy days. So the total will be 15, right? So 
for a sunny day. So if a given date is a sunny day, so so probability will be 0 0.67, right? 0 0.67, right? For for a rainy day, that will be like this, right? <coughs> so these things are like straightforward things, right? Then uh, so the Bayes theorem, right? So so see, guys, know the Bayes theorem, right? Yes. Okay. Then uh, what about IS people? Do you know the base theorem? No, no idea. How about the science people? Science people. <coughs> So you guys, I th I hope you guys have some sort of idea about Bayes theorem, right? So suppose uh, now we calculate the our probability values, right? So if you didn't get these things, that's okay, right? So I'll do the uh, do a question, right? So if you practice that question, that will be enough, right? So this for your information, right? So now we calculate like. Uh, so if it's a rainy day or a sunny day, so the probability will be, if it's a rainy day, so the prob probability will be look like this for a, uh, so for a sunny day, then for a rainy day, the probabilities will be look like this, right? <clears throat> then suppose that uh, we are given like, uh, so she eating ice cream, right? So the probability of uh, she eating ice cream on a sunny day will be 80%, right? For a uh, rainy day, so the probabilities will be, uh, 40%, right? Then, so so they are asking, right? So the question will be like this. So if she eats ice cream, right? What is the probability of that, that day will be a sunny day or a rainy day, right? So in here, we are given that, uh, so she eat ice cream, right? So we are given she eat ice cream, right? We have to find whether the probability of that day will be a sunny day or a rainy day, right? So we have to find the probability value that when she eat ice cream, so what will be the probability of having that day is a rainy day or a sunny day, right? Like that. So the calculation will be based on the base theorem, right? <coughs> so if you are not familiar with these things, that's okay. So the, in the base theorem, so we are given ice cream that we are asked, so we are calculating for a sunny day, right? So given ice cream, so based on that base theorem, we can write this thing, right? So we know that uh, we can write this, uh, this uh, so if you want to find the, like, so in a given day, so for, so it's given like she eats ice cream, what is the probability of that day will be a sunny day, right? So that's the calculation we try to do, right? So we know actually uh, if it is a sunny day, she will eat ice cream probability is 80%, right? So that's the other way around, right? So so first it's given, uh, so it's a sunny day, then uh, she will eat ice cream, like a probability of 80%, right? So we know that is 80%. Then the uh, probability of having that day is a sunny day, we calculate as a previous slide. So that is uh, 0.67, right? We know that the then uh, the total uh, uh, probability of she will eat ice cream, right? So that's mean like, uh, so, so she can eat ice cream on a rainy day, also on a sunny day, right? So that's the total probability of she will eat ice cream, right? Then uh, if you do the calculation, right? These things are here. Then uh, she can eat ice cream on a sunny day. So th this, this is here. Then uh, the probability of she eat uh, ice cream on a rainy day. So this is here, right? So I think you guys know this how base theorem works, right? So the final calculation value will be 0.8, right? So <coughs> so these things will be given on your exam paper, right? So in here I just want to show how how these things will be calculated, right? So <coughs> so the same thing we can do for the rainy day. So what is the probability of uh, if she eating ice cream that the day will be a rainy day, rainy day right? So the uh, probability will be 
point two, right? So that's based on the base theorem, right? Uh, if you have confused, <laughs> that's a that's a normal behavior. That's okay, right? Then uh, so this is the thing, right? So. <clears throat> Okay, now uh, we uh, so now the, that book uh, have some sort of observation like this, right? So in uh, on a Tuesday she ate ice cream, in the next day she ate uh, chocolate, right? So now Bob want to find the probability of sorry. So the Bob want to find the whether this Tuesday is a sunny day or a rainy day, right? Then for this one whether it's a sunny day or a rainy day, right? So the Bob want to infer those values, right? <clears throat> right there, there may be two options no so either it can be sunny or rainy right for a tuesday there should there are only two possibilities it can be rainy or sunny for a wednesday it can be rainy or sunny right like that so so these things are i'm doing on a, not on a, like dna sequence if you do this in a dna sequence you will be more confused right so that's why i use this uh, simple practical example Right. <clears throat> if you are, uh, uh, I'll do the some one question so that will be, uh, then you will be okay, right? So in uh, if we uh, take the all the hidden po uh, uh, states possibilities, right? So we can have uh, some sort of uh, something like this, right? <clears throat> right. So. There are only two days, Tuesday and Wednesday. We want to find the weather forecast, right? So it can be uh, Tuesday will be a sunny day, then Wednesday will be a sunny day, right? If we uh, then uh, we can have uh, like uh, Tuesday is a sunny day, then Wednesday is a rainy day, like that. We can have several uh, possibilities, right? So since there are two possibilities, right? So for one day, right? For two days, we we have four possibilities right so so this is our model right so we can either so these are our answers right if she eat ice cream on ice cream on tuesday then uh, <coughs> uh chocolate on wednesday right so this is wednesday this is tuesday right so the the weather forecast will be uh, one of these uh, uh, four possibilities right so either it can be uh, two sunny days so Either it can be a one sunny day then a rainy day like that. So this should be a, uh, sorry. So this should be a rainy day, right? Okay. <clears throat> like that. Uh, so the answer will be here, right? So we try to find that answer actually, right? So it's like a model, right? If we made made the correct model, right? Then we can. Uh, uh, correctly predict the our weather forecast right based on our observations right we are only observe the ice cream and the chocolates then we try to tell the weather forecast right something like that <clears throat> so okay then so is it okay up to this point so did you get what we trying to do so if you if you have some sort of idea what we are going to do, then uh, that's fine. If someone didn't get what, he, what we are trying to do, then uh, please ask. We have enough time. If you are not clear, please ask. I can uh, give another examples. So is it okay? Uh, so here yeah. we have to calculate the probability for each uh, state. Yeah. To to get the answer. Yeah. Actually, we are. I'll do the uh, how. I'll show how to calculate that thing, right? So in basically in here, right? Uh, <coughs> we have only op op we can. Only observe the probabilities of chocolate and uh, ice cream thing, right? By looking at that uh, chocolate and ice cream, right? We try to uh, find the correct answer. So the, we have only these four possibilities, right? 
so this should be uh, ready day right so we have only these four, four possibilities right since we have two days right for one day it can it has only two possibilities rainy or it can be rainy or sunny right so we have the answer on these four uh, uh, possibilities but we have to find the correct one right for that we can do some calculation right so we know the we can we have that uh, hidden mark of model right we know the transition values then the emissions values so transition value means so if it is a tuesday then next day will be a wednesday so what is the probability like that right so we 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 have those values right then in a sunny day suppose in a sunny day what so the possibility of she will eat ice cream then in the sunny day the possibility of she eat chocolate like that we we have those uh, uh, probability values, right? Based on those probability values, we try to find the correct uh, sequence. Like uh, correct sequence means like, so it can be uh, rain, rainy on Tuesday, sunny on Tuesday, rainy on Wednesday. So if we get uh, some sort of a higher value, then this will be our answer. Suppose this one give, give us the best value, then this will be the, our prediction, right? Like that. <coughs> so. Right, so is it okay up to now? Right, we try to find the correct uh, state for these two days, right? So how are we going to do the calculation? It, it will look like this, right? Suppose we select, uh, we can, we have to do the calculation for all the four possibilities, right? In here, if we select this, this sequence, right? This day is a sunny day, then, uh, Wednesday is a rainy day. If we select this one, so we have to do the calculation like this, right? So, <clears throat> right now you have uh, like this, right? So you know the uh, probability of uh, having a sunny day, right? So that is 0.67, right? Then if today is uh, like Tuesday is uh, sunny day right so we know the possibility of probability of having a rainy day on the next day right so that is 0.2 right so this is transition probability right this is transition probability this is initial probability right then uh, so she ate this this sequence no right so tuesday she eat uh, ice cream and wednesday she eat uh, chocolate right so now we are in our hidden state, we select this sequence, right? So now we try to check whether this will be fit for our this uh, observation, right? So this, then, uh, so we know that in a sunny day, the probability of she will eat ice cream is 0.8. In a rainy day, the probability of she will eat uh, uh, chocolate is 0.6, right? So we know those things, right? So now we have to do the calculation, right? So just a simple calculation, right? Something like this, right? So we have to uh, multiply all the these values, right? So first it is the uh, initial date is uh, uh, 0.67, so probability of having a sunny day, right? 0.67, then uh, she will eat uh, ice cream on that day will be 0 0.8, right? So the rest of the things, occurring with this thing right so if she have if she eat these uh, things on like uh, sunny day and uh, I had the ice cream right then <clears throat> the second day she will uh, have a chocolate right so she had the chocolate right so this is 0 0.6 right in our our so we select the hidden state test the next day will be a rainy day right so the transition value from a sunny day to a rainy day is 0.2, right? So we just have to multiply these four values, right? So that will be give some answer, right? So this is the possibility uh, probability of having this this setup like this model, right? So so in our case we have to calculate for all the four possibilities, right? If we calculate for the all the possibilities, so it will be look like this. So this is a rainy day and sunny day. And this is 
rainy day and rainy day right we have some sort of these uh, values here right so we have to so then the <coughs> next next two possibilities will be looked like this right so first day is a sunny day then uh, next day is a rainy day then the uh, first day is a sunny day then next day is a sunny day right by looking at these uh, four values right so this is some sort of 0 0.1 this is 0 0.4 Sorry, 0 0.04, then this is 0 0.01, then this is 0 0.06, then this is 0 0.08, right? Okay, so this, uh, in our case, so the, this setup will be give our, give the highest value, right? So the, so we get the, some sort of a point zero 0.08 value, right? Out of our four possibilities, right? So this will give the highest value then we can tell that this will be a mostly likelihood uh, relationship like so the first one will be a sunny day and the next one next day also will be a sunny day right so this is tuesday this is wednesday right by looking at this uh, observation now we infer the what are our uh, weather forecast right right we can we have to uh, go through all the possibilities, right? We have to do the calculation for all the possibilities and find the highest value, right? So that will be our model, right? <clears throat> so that is the answer, right? So we are starting from uh, this point, right? Then we, uh, the, our model will give the highest value for, first one should be a sunny day, right? First one should be a sunny day and the next day should be a Sunny day. Okay. Is it okay? Did you get the point? Uh, me, sir. I have yeah. all correction. Uh, yeah. More to the probability value. Uh, here, sir, we have four states. So then, why? Uh, the yeah, we have, we have a total of four four possible answers, right? We have yeah. four, four possible answers, right? Why yeah. the uh, sum of the probabilities uh, is more than one? So we, I I didn't get you actually. Uh, the more, more the than one for each state. Yeah, and calculate the sum. Of the no, not the sum. We have to multi multiply. No, 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 sir. Uh, okay. We, we can get the probability for each states, no? Yeah. For the four possible states. Yeah. So why the, uh, I think, normally if there is two states. Yeah. The, uh, the summation should be one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it get uh, more than one, I think. Like you mean, like uh, so, in the cal uh, calculating the whole setup, yeah, so all the possible these things, and if we get a summation, so that will be more than one. So that's uh, the is that the answer for so is that the question? For I see that it's get more than one. Okay, then uh, <clears throat> we we'll see. So in here we get around zero point sorry point ah. zero six, right? Point so, zero six. So, so that's the that's the one thing I want to so that we remove that thing right so that's for uh, your representation just for to represent this thing right so we starting from this point right we have uh, 0 0.01 in here we have 0 0.04 in uh, by this we have around uh, 0 0.05 right yes. right yeah then uh, 0 0.05 uh, then uh, point uh, one one, uh, one nine. It's below the one I think. It below one I think. Right. So yeah. in here, the the thing is right. If you uh, the, you're telling something like this, right? Actually, we have to uh, like calculate. So we didn't calculate that. Uh, so we know that she ate ice cream. So we didn't calculate. Uh, the probability of she eating chocolate for this point, right? Right? In here also, we didn't calculate 
the probability of she eating ice cream right so we left these whole whole uh, possibilities right we just we focus on the observation right so this is our observation to observation right then we brute force like we take all the possibilities for only this uh, these uh, states right it, it can be sunny sunny it can be rainy rain, like that right so i think so we there will be more po possibilities like not only four right there may, there should be more possibilities the, the, then if we take all the summation then that should be one right in the in our case we we have our observation right we are focusing on our observation right that right? we left out the rest of these things right like uh, having a chocolate on a sunny day we left that thing right we didn't calculate the calculation for that thing because that not fit our observation right so the observation is uh, eating ice cream on a tuesday then uh, eating chocolate on wednesday right for since we didn't uh, calculate eating uh, chocolate on tuesday then uh, eating ice cream on wednesday so that will be the issue right by uh, sum summation so i think that will be uh, around uh, it uh, below one i think actually in here we have 0 0.4 0 0.1 that's 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.5 with uh, 0 0.6 right then uh, it uh, around 0 0.11 then uh, 0 0.11 with 0 0.8 that is around 0 0.19 right am i correct yes sir. so is it is it uh, okay now yes sir okay then <clears throat> so if you did, did did get the point right so we are based on some sort of uh, observations right we are focused on this observation and we try to infer the possible answers, right? So in our DNA sequence scenario, right? So we want to, suppose this is a DNA sequence, right? So this DNA sequence is labeled, right? Suppose this, this has some label like XYZ or something like that, right? So, so by looking at these, uh, our observations, right? We can observe what is, in here, no? it can be A, C, T, whatever values. No? We observe those values, right? Then we try to infer the label, right? So that's the scenario we use uh, hidden mark of model zone DNA sequences, right? So because these labels are very important, right? So there, there are some, so the labels can be coding or non-coding, right? I'll show that thing later, right? So, <clears throat> So that's the thing we use. So we try to basically we try to infer whether this uh, set of if we take set of this portion right this uh, sequence. So whether it can be a non-coding or a coding one, right? So that's the point, right? Like that we we can observe these uh, uh, ATCJ values by looking at these uh, ATCJ values. We try to infer the, whether it should be a labeled one or uh, so it, it, whether it should be a coding one, one or non-coding one, like that, right? So that is the usage of hidden mark of model on uh, uh, DNA sequencing, right? <clears throat> so if we if 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 we can correctly label our DNA sequence, right? Then we can go for other like uh, uh, aligning or whatever thing, right? So so DNA sequence is a very large sequence, right? So there are no labels, right? There are um, uh, actually there are non-coding uh, values. I think uh, around 99% non-coding values are there, right? So if we try to <coughs> based on those non-coding values, we 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 should uh, like uh, emit uh, like remove those non-coding values and get only the coding values because those coding values are actually used for the protein sequencing, right? <coughs> That's the thing. So. So is it okay up to now? So in your DNA, if you take your DNA, right? There are no labels, no, right? So we have, we try to uh, make our labels based on these uh, values, these things, right? 
like uh, so the ice cream and uh, chocolate will be looked like ATCG values, right? Then uh, sunny or rainy will be looked like the coding and coding, right? So that's the mapping, right? So is it okay? If you have any questions, please ask. So I think the we we'll, uh, like planning to give you a uh, question on this uh, hidden mark of model. <clears throat> Right, not a full question, like a part of a question, right? If you didn't get the uh, theory, just please ask, right? <clears throat> so as today's uh, activity, right? Suppose you are having a, so that Sheila, that Sheila eating, uh, you know Sheila that in, uh, like <clears throat> man's ring that Sheila, right? So in uh, Sheila eating uh, ice cream on Tuesday, uh, chocolate on Wednesday and chocolate on Thursday, right? So now you have to find the correct answers like uh, what will be the uh, weather forecast for these three days, whether it's Tuesday is a sunny day, right? Whether it's a sunny day or a rainy day like that, right? So there, there are around eight possible answers, right? Right, two to the power three, right? So we have three days. So two options for one day. If we multiply, we, we can, we should have eight total uh, answers, possible answers, right? Like this. Uh, like this, we can have, uh, we have our answers on these, uh, eight states right okay. but you you have to find the exact answer right so i don't know what is the answer okay. you can do the calculation i'll show you the uh, probability values you can do the calculation for all the eight right so it's just one multiplication right so just a uh, eight uh, writing eight uh, statement you can get the final answer right so you should go for the highest value so if you get the highest value from this setup, so that's the answer, right? So you can tell that Tuesday is a rainy day, Wednesday is a rainy day, and Thursday is a rainy day, like that, right? So I'll show you the probability values, right? I'll give you around uh, 10 minutes, then you can <coughs> do the calculation, and you can either type your answers on uh, that uh, submission, or you can just take a snap and uh, up, uh, upload, right? So, so I'll show you the hidden mark of model. Then you can based on that thing you can do the calculation, right? So is it convenient in this way, or you do you want that uh, that graph, that example, or do you want this graph or the hidden mark of model? So in here, you should have that uh, 0 0.67 for a sunny day and 0.33 for a rainy day, right? So I'll uh, then, uh, mm, we're doing this. Can you see these uh, values? Can you see these probability values? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, then uh, I think this will be more convenient, right? So you should have start from initial probability, right? So if it is a, if it is a sunny day, it is a six, seven. If it is a, a rainy day, it is 0.33, right? Then in the middle, you just use the transition values, right? Not the initial uh, probability values. You go for the transition values, state transition probabilities then the emission probabilities, right? Okay, I'll give you around uh, uh, 10 minutes. Then, uh, so the other sequence is this, right? So our sequence is this uh, ice cream, then ice cream, chocolate, chocolate, right? 
Okay, I'll give you uh, around 10 minutes. If you have any question, just ask, right? Right. You have to do the, all the calculation for these eight uh, sequence, right? Eight uh, eight patterns, right? Then you should find the highest value. So that's the answer, right? Like this. So in here you can find that uh, initial probabilities and the transition uh, emission probabilities and transition probabilities, right? Uh, I think there are some uh, other values also. Then. Uh, And you can refer this uh, hidden mark of model, the transition varies from sunny days to rainy day and rainy days to sunny days. Then sunny days to sunny days, rainy days to rainy days, right? If you take like this, sunny day, sunny day, so it should be a transition value should be 0.8, right? Because it's a sunny day to another sunny day, right? Like that, then uh, we already have these uh, <coughs> emission values. <coughs> So 0 0.67 is the initial probability if you if you start from a sunny day. So that should be 0 0.67, right? If you start from a rainy day, that should be 0 0.33, right? Okay, so that's
सर हेलो या गो हेड सर जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन एंड जीरो पॉइंट थ्री थ्री इस दिस वैल्यूज ओनली फॉर इनिशियल डे या या फॉर द इनिशियल डे दैट मींस ओनली फॉर ट्यूसडे या 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 लाइक नॉट फॉर द ट्रांसिशंस इफ यू सिलेक्ट सो द इट्स लाइक why uh, the probability of you selecting uh, tuesday as a sunny day right that is 0.67 then uh, of course the next day is a rainy day right so that's the transition value right you should only put transition values right is it clear so then for wednesday we don't have to initiate again right I didn't get you. What? Uh, from going Wednesday to Thursday, we don't have to initiate again. No, 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 no. Just a transition, right? So if you like, uh, if you have, suppose you select this, this sequence, right? So first you select the first first day as a sunny day, right? There should be a probability value for that selection, right? Then the the if it is a Tuesday is a sunny day, then uh, Wednesday is a uh, sunny day also, right? Then this is the transition value, right? Then uh, <coughs> so if you select uh, Tuesday as a sunny, day, then what will be the value for uh, 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 Wednesday will be a probability of Wednesday become a sunny day. So that's a transition, not the base values, right? Initial values, right? Is it okay? Okay, sir.
Okay, did you get the answer, correct answer? Okay. Uh, so what is the answer? What are the values you get? So I got sunny and rainy day, rainy day got 0 0.023. 0 0.023. So, any other answers? <clears throat> right? So, so, I got the same answer. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, actually, I didn't calculate the correct answer. So, you can upload your answer, then we'll see. Okay. So, then I'm moving on, then. Uh, Suppose, so if you use something like the larger sequence, right? Now you know the, there are more possibilities coming, right? So this in here, like uh, two to the power, like uh, six, right? Suppose uh, like a DNA sequence, it has around a very large number, right? Then, uh, so this is not a very good algorithm to practice, right? So, so there are other, Another, so there are several algorithms. In your case, uh, we are discussing about the uh, vertib algorithm, right? <coughs> so in a DNA sequence, right? So uh, in here, like if you take a DNA sequence, suppose this is a DNA sequence, right? So in here, there are mainly two, two parts, like uh, coding regions and non-coding regions, right? So I think these things are covered in the uh, previous lectures, right? at the very beginning, I think, right? So these uh, coding sequences are, coding regions are responsible for uh, creating proteins, right? So the non-coding, there are, for non-coding regions, there are a set of uh, functionalities, right? So for in here, we actually want to, suppose we have something, uh, a larger DNA sequence like this, right? So we want to like split it, right? So the, up to this point, this is a coding thing, right? So from this point to this thing, this is a non-coding. Like that, we want to label our DNA sequence, right? So for that, we use a hidden Markov model, right? As I said before, we are observing the <coughs> nucleotide values, right? ATCJ values, we observing ATCJ values. Then uh, from that, we infer the, whether this this region is a coding region or an uncoding region, right? Because we are like uh, in, uh, if you consider DNA sequence around, uh, I think around 99%, it has a uh, junk like uh, non-coding uh, regions, right? That's why if we tr try to uh, align the whole sequence, right? So they are, they are, So if we are only considering about the coding sequences, right? If you try to align something with the non with the non coding regions, so the, the accuracy will be very low, right? So that's why we try to split this uh, DNA sequence, right? We take only the coding part, then do whatever we want, right? So that's the usage of our uh, hidden Markov model on DNA sequence, right? <coughs> then, uh, like this, right? Suppose this uh, DNA sequence, there are coding, non coding regions and coding regions, right? So if we, so it's mapped with our initial, uh, that story, right? So for a coding and non coding, it's like a hidden state, sunny or rainy, right? So like uh, that ice cream or oh, that thing, it look like that, the observe, observe things, right? Like, uh, <coughs> ATCG values, right? So then, uh, <clears throat> so is it okay up to this point? Did you get the theory behind this hidden Markov model? So this is, uh, we, we can use uh, this hidden Markov model for any computation not for the DNA sequence, right? So in your case, we, in this uh, course, we try to use Hidden Markov model for uh, 
uh, DN is equals, right? So I'll do an example, right? So this is the uh, important thing, right? So you will get an exam question, right? So the previous slide said for your for your information, for your understanding only, right? <coughs> right. Suppose, uh, so we can use this uh, hidden mark of model as a predictor, like a machine learning model, right? We can uh, train this uh, hidden mark of model. Then uh, we can do the prediction whether these regions are the coded regions or non-coded regions, right? Suppose uh, if we like take something like this, the more simple gene predictor, right? So we try in here, we try to uh, predict coded regions and the non-coded regions. So this is our DNA sequence, right? We try to label this DNA sequence using this hidden mark of model. Right? <coughs> uh, it's uh, something like this, right? So now you have this uh, ATCG values, right? So you are observing these ATCG values, right? In your hidden state. So you are trying to uh, label this as a non-coding region or a coding region, right? So, so like that uh, sunny or rainy day, right? So <clears throat> there are some uh, emission probabilities also, right? So what is the probability of having A in a non-coding region, right? So that's the emission probability like uh, eating ice cream on a sunny day, right? So that's the emission probability that's not with this scenario also, right? So that is the emission probabilities. We have these emission pro <coughs> probabilities here, right? Then uh, we have transition probabilities also, right? So we observe in this uh, nucleotide sequence, then we try to get the correct model, like uh, what will be the correct answer, like, uh, non-coding coding, coding uh, uh, labeling, right? <clears throat> then, right, uh, so we have two state, as I said before, right, uh, sunny or rainy, like in here, we have coding regions and non-coding regions, right? From a coding region, we can come to a non-coding region, also non-coding region, we can come to a coding region, right? Like. Uh, sunny day to rainy day, rainy day to sunny day, right? Then uh, we can uh, go from coding region to coding region, like sunny day to sunny day, like that. Uh, non-coding region to non-coding region, right? Like that we can, so like, uh, so so suppose this is a non-coding region, N4 non-coding, C4 coding, right? So suppose this is a non-coding region, so this is a coding region, so this transition is non-coding non -coding to a coding, right? So this is a coding to a coding transition, same as this, right? Then, uh, as I said before, there are some emission probabilities, uh, emitting like uh, get like getting a a on a on a non-coding region, right? So this is that. Then uh, C on a coding region, right? So this is this C is responsible for this uh, whether it's a coding or non-coding. If it's a non-coding, it should be N. If it is a coding, it should be C, right? So the in the, in our parenthesis inside these parentheses we have the uh, ATCG values, right? <coughs> then uh, we can uh, calculate the transition probabilities, as I said before. But in your exam paper, you will get the transition probabilities, right? Because you, uh, we uh, like uh, so the DNA sequence are very complex, right? You can simply calculate those transition probabilities, right? <coughs> Then, right, these emission probabilities, we already discussed these things, right? So in the coding region, you can have either ACG, ACGT, right? So there should be some uh, emission probability values. For an uncoded region also, you can have ACGT values, right? It's like, uh, uh, it's like uh, <coughs> occurring uh, eating, eating ice cream or uh, eating chocolate, right? So this is a sunny day or rainy day. So this is like uh, eating ice cream or uh, chocolate, right? In our example, we had only two options, but in here, so there are four nucleotides, no? right? So four, four, four uh, options, right? ACGT, ACGT, right? So is it clear?
right i know i'm not going to uh, do some uh, that uh, mathematical equations right since this is a common subject right so i'll try to uh, do this in uh, like abstract level right <clears throat> then uh, you have uh, transition probabilities and emission probabilities right so like uh, in, like a training the model right uh, i think some of you have done the machine learning right so in our training uh, we like uh, setting like uh, these transition probabilities like between states and for each state we have to set uh, emission probabilities then between state you have to set transition probabilities right so like uh, training phase is uh, same as the normal uh, machine learning model training right you have a uh, known values right you have set of uh, known values right you are given this this up to this point this is coding from this point, this uh, and point like that. Based on these values, you are training your model, right? Your hidden mark of model, you are training now, right? After you uh, get the uh, correct uh, weight values are set, then you can use this as a predictor, right? So, <clears throat> so that's the uh, training session, right? So after that, you get the these uh, transition probabilities. Right, then the emission probabilities, right? So N4 non coding, C4 coding, right? So, like, suppose if you take, like, uh, if you take something like this point, right? So, this is like, uh, M, like having uh, occurring uh, C, C on a non coding region, right? Like eating ice cream on a sunny day, right? <laughs> Uh, like that, you can have these emissions value. Then uh, you can have uh, state transition probabilities, coding to co non coding to non coding. In here, is it 0 0.8, like that, uh, like sunny day to sunny day, right? Like that. So, that example you will uh, ma map with this your DNA sequence thing, right? Then uh, so we like like annotated like labeling this uh, your DNA sequence, right? So <coughs> then here actually we try to find the uh, correct path that will give the highest probability, like mostly likelihood value, right? So what is the sequence? What is the path, right? So there should be several paths, right? <coughs> so we try to find the optimal one, right? <coughs> then uh, in our algorithm right uh, one thing right uh, as you guys uh, do that uh, calculation right the uh, activity right you have to you have to multiply some values right so mul multiply several values right so multiplication is very uh, uh, computational heavy right for that we can use this uh, log log based thing right log log a, log a multiplied by b is equal to log a plus b you know, right we can suppose we have uh, transition values and uh, emission values, right? You can simply get the log values, right? Then you just have to uh, add those values, right? So that's basically a uh, computationally very uh, <coughs> not very expensive, right? So that's the one approach to do the optimization, right? So if I take an example, right? Uh, we we'll do the example. Right. Suppose we have this uh, sequence, right? So by looking at this sequence, you can tell these are uh, up to this point coding, up to this point uncoding, like that. You can tell that no, right? Suppose this is a very large one, like uh, like ten thousand or whatever, right? So it's very hard, right? So you you, you should have uh, some sort of uh, algorithm based on uh, like uh, like a hidden marker model to do the label annotation, right? <clears throat> So, so we do the uh, do this example on this Viterbi algorithm, right? This algorithm will look like this, right? <clears throat> In here, basically, these are the base models, right? Ba base probability values, like having a right, like uh, selecting probability, right? Right, you have non-coding value but by selecting a non-coding value, the probability 
value will be look like this. So these are all log values, right? That's why those value sign uh, negative values, right? So for coding, so the probabilities will look like this, right? So our uh, initial uh, sequence is C G A A A A A A T C J, right? So this is our uh, <coughs> sequence, uh, our given sequence, right? So in here we given the this transition probabilities, right? Like non-coding to non-coding, this much of probability, non-coding to coding, this much of probability, right? Then the emissions value, right? So occurring A on an uncoding region, occurring C on an uncoding region, like that, right? Then, like uh, our algorithm will uh, look like this. So we will get the maximum value, right? So these things are based on, so like it like this. So we will calculate the this point of this point value by using this point value, right? So suppose this is a uh, i plus 1, right? So suppose this is i, right? Then this is i plus 1. We calculate the i plus 1 based on i, right? So it's like uh, propagating this. We do some calculation and we take the these uh, probability values, right? So we, then uh, at the end, we can get some sort of a path, right? So, so if you get the, finally, if you get the highest value, Suppose in at this point you will get the highest value, then you can uh, find your labeling, right? Because you have non-coding and coding here, right? I'll I'll do this example, then you can get it, right? <coughs> First, uh, like uh, <coughs> in here, right? You are in a base level. If you have any paper and a <coughs> pen, then uh, try to write it down, right? So that will be helpful. Right. <clears throat> so first, uh, we are in a non-coding region. So this, this table, this table, and this column is given, right? On like, suppose in your exam, these things are will be given, right? So first thing is, we have uh, C. C is here, right? So what is the probability of having uh, C on a non-coding region, right? So we are on a non-coding region, right? First row. So it is a uh, minus 0 0.523, right? In uh, in here, we don't uh, multiply, right? We just simply add in the values, right? By adding this uh, 0 point, minus 0 0.23 to this value, you will get some value here, right? Can anyone tell the value? Uh, should be like uh, 0 0.097 plus 0 0.523. It's like a minus 0 0.62, right? Actually, I have this value. Okay. So this is the value, right? 0 0.62, right? So you have now uh, one value here, right? Then, uh, so again, you have, uh, you are still in this, this point, right? So it's st still in this column, right? Then again, what will be the probability of uh, occurring a C on a coding region, right? So now we are considering this second row, right? So this, this value is given, right? So calculating the value for this point, right? So coding, re, uh, non, we are in a coding region. So this is the coding region. Coding region now occurring C. It's the value minus 699, right? We just simply uh, have to add that value with the uh, value with this, this value, right? So, so we will get another value for this point, right? Now we have one value here, another value here, right? So this is 0 0.062, right? Then based on that value, then you can gain another two values, right? So now you are in a non-coding region, right? Right? Either you can go for a coding region 
or a non coding region you can either uh, change your state to coding region right you, you can come to this uh, this row or you can keep going on this row from from this value also you can get uh, you can go for either <coughs> for non coding region or coding region right suppose if you select the if you get a get value like this point right so the value will be look like this right so 0 0.62 is the value of this cell right then uh, you did the transition from non coding region to non coding region right so you are in a non coding region non coding region to non coding region is minus 0 97 right you just have to add those values right you add in this minus value now you did the transition right then uh, now we are already in the non coding region then we have g g g is occurred right so what is the probability of occurring a g on a non coding region so that is minus 5 2 3 right so you will get a one value from this this thing right so that's mean for you are from a non coding region to non coding region right then the next option will be you can go from this point to from non coding region you can go for coding region right <coughs> you are now here you can either select this part or this part right right is it clear is it clear no So you will get oh, yeah. yes, okay. You will get a question on this, right? So if you didn't get this, uh, get this thing, please try to do your homework. Then uh, I think it will be okay, right? So I'll just show you the algorithm, right? So if you, I I start from the beginning, right? <clears throat> First, you had some uh, base probability values, right? Like this. Based on those probability values, you try to get the probability of this thing right so this value column value is c right so c mean this now you are in an uncoding region right from non-coding region right select if you select c right so the value will be minus five two three right since you are working on a log values you don't need to multiply those values you can just simply add right since this, those all the values are uh, minus values, you just have to uh, keep adding the minus values, right? So, so the value will look like this: zero point minus zero point six two, right? Then again, you can calculate for this this row also, right? So you should calculate value for this row also, right? You get you will get another value, something like some value, right? <coughs> now you are on the up to this point, is, is it okay? You didn't do any transition, right? You just uh, check the probability of occurring this C, right? Then uh, you add this with the uh, initial probability, right? Up to this point, is it okay? You have now two values, right? I'll show the values later, right? You have now two values, right? Now, suppose you are in this point, right? You can either uh, do a transition from, so this is a non-coding row. No? You can either go for non-coding. So this arrow means if the arrow goes like this, so that means you're not changing your state. You are on the same state, right? It's like the non-coding to non-coding transition, right? Else you can do, a, uh, you can change your state, right? Like you are in a non-coding region, you can go for, a, coding region right from every every point you will have two options right from this point you have you have two options from this point you will have two options right like that right is it okay so the values are something like this so suppose you are on point minus point six two right if you didn't change your state so you are on the same on an uncoding region so you get something some value like this right so the 
in here we are selecting this we are using this value right we are using this value then uh, do for the value 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 of value of this this cell then the transition then the uh, so this is g right and this right these are the three values right so transition from uh, non coding to non coding that's mean this right we do a non coding to non coding transition then uh, <coughs> occurring g of a non coding region this value then the value of i right i mean the previous value right previous value is this based on that you can calculate one value from this this point right like that suppose you, now you have these two values on this cell right <coughs> uh like that you can have every point you have two options right in a viterbi algorithm we we take only the maximum value out of cell right you consider if you consider this cell right so you will have minus 1.24 then minus 2.018 right then you can select the max value so the max value will be minus 1.24 right so so in here you have only one value but here you have two values right but you eliminate one and take only the highest value right so based on that highest value you keep doing the same thing right you keep doing the calculation right so i'll show you the uh, values right so the values will be look like this right so you starting from this point you do the calculation you get some sort of value like this right from this point you do some calculation you get that value right <coughs> from each cell you have two option but you you should select the highest value right out of this cell so the highest value is minus 2472 minus 24 right so you would, you then you do the calculation you based on this 1.24 right so you get another two values right one from this uh, coded region one from this non coded region out of these two options you select the highest value then you do the calculation like that you should do for all the non coding row and the coding row right <clears throat> like that you if you come to the end of your sequence right so this is the end of your sequence right now you done the uh, viterbi algorithm you run to run the viterbi algorithm right so is it okay so you should, you, should, you just have to consider transition value right transition value plus previous cell value right then the that uh, that acgt uh, occurring value like em emission value right you can do the summation then you will get uh, one value from here right so suppose this is this right then again one one value from coding region so this is this right then you should do get the uh, like uh, you have two options here no? then you should get the out of max value so the max value will be look like this right so you should keep uh, track what what is the uh, like these uh, uh, <coughs> headers right you should put the headers then you can do the backtracking and find the exact uh, labels right so is it okay Oh, you, you guys just confused. Yeah, go ahead. Is it what's the problem? Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I have one problem that in the column G, column uh this this place. Yeah. Okay. Here, uh, there are actually four possibilities. Yeah, four four possibilities. We and have. For non-coding, uh, there are two possibilities that come from the non-coding area and the coding area. Coding area, yeah, right. For so the max value should be the 
that uh, value that from uh, that two. Oh. Sorry. Oh. The no, we are, we are using minus values now. Yeah. Right. So the smaller the value, the higher the its exact value, right? Yeah. So the In, number should be small, right? Yeah. In previously. Uh, here in non-coding area we have minus zero six two and yeah. we we have uh, two values for non-coding and coding area so that uh, to take the maximum we uh, didn't consider that one no? you mean uh, this column or this column no no in g, g, g column in G column, right? Yeah. You have two rows now, right? Yes. Yeah. So for suppose you are in non-coding region. So if you select this column, you have two options, right? So you select the highest value, right? Based on those, those that highest value, you do the calculation for next uh, next column, right? So it yeah. here eliminate this value, right? From this also you get the highest value, right? Yeah. So you eliminate this thing and you will get the one value from this cell, one value from this cell, right? Like the previous cell, right? Like the previous column, right? You will have four options, but you eliminate two, right? Yeah, I got it. Right? So then when you backtracking, actually, you should get the most highest value, right? So there are a uh, higher value for this cell, then there are a higher value for this, highest value for this column, right? For this column, highest value is minus 1.24, right? You have these four options now. Then uh, if you select only the this cell, so the highest value is minus 2.02, right? For backtracking purposes, you should uh, <coughs> consider the only the uh, highest value for the this column, right? Most uh, that highest value for this column, right? So it will something look like this, right? If you run run the algorithm, then you will come up to uh, some point like this, right? If you consider these two values, right? So the minus seven is the highest value, right? Either you can do the backtracking, you can go for uh, the, these headers, based on these headers, you can go like this, like, uh, so you are in G, then C, like that, right? Then, uh, like this, right? Or you can just simply get the highest value, select the highest value for this column, right? So we select this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. Like that, we select the highest values. So then we can draw our path, so the path will be look like this, right? right? Then you can see that the our sequence is C, G, G, whatever this thing, right? So in the first, up to this point, up to actually this point, you are on a non-coding region, right? So for ends, right? <clears throat> you have four ends, right? Because you are on this 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 row, non-coding, 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 right? Then you do the transition. Now you come to the coding region, right? From this A, right? Coding. Coding, 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 right? Right? Then again, you do the transition, you come from coding to non coding, right? Non coding, non coding, right? So now you finally able to label your <coughs> uh, DNA sequence, right? That's how we uh, label the DNA sequence using this VTB uh, algorithm, right? So this is based on the hidden mark of models, obviously, right? So you just have to take the uh, highest values, right? For each color, each cell, you have to select the highest value when you complete in the whole table. After you complete the whole table, you just have to select the highest value for each color, actually, right? Not for cell, each color. For this color, you just have to take the highest value. So the highest value is this, right? Not this, right? This is the, this is the highest value for this cell. Right, uh, like a a on the coding region, right? So, but if you select all this uh, a column, so the highest value is this, right? 
So is it okay? So when you are on a base level, right? You just have to uh, add the add value that uh, like uh, occurring CEO on an encoding region. You just have to add these two values, right? But after that, you have uh, you can get uh, transitions also, right? If you at this point, you should add the uh, right. So you should add the transition necessary transition. If you go from non-coding to non-coding, you should add this number with non-coding to non-coding this number, right? Because this is non-coding to non-coding. Then uh, G is occurring on a non-coding region, so that's that that value is this, right? By get the summation, then you will by summation you will get some value like this, right? Again, if you change your transition, if you go from non-coding to coding, right? This part, so the value will look that look like this, non-coding to non-coding to coding, right? Then you have to add this value, this value with this, then uh, right? Then uh, in, now we are on a coding region. Then uh, coding region G is occurring probability is this, right? Not not this value, right? So that's the that's like this, right? Like this, you you keep this this value common, right? Because these these two options are occurring from this point, so this value is same. This one change with the uh, transition, and this one change with the emission, right? If you are go for this one, so you are on a non-coding region, so emission value, you should take this one. But if you take the uh, transition like non-coding to coding, right? You, you change this, you take this value, right? Then now you're on the coding region, right? You come to the uh, lower one, right? Now you're on a coding region. <clears throat> now the value, should, you should get it like this, right? So this is the emission value you should, you should get for your calculation. Then you get the max value, right? So based on that max value, you do the calculation for this, this next cell, next column, right? So, so the thing is, I can't actually write on this thing, otherwise I'll show how it calculates, right? So the final values actually will be look like this, right? So the final values will be <coughs> look like this. So these bold uh, values are the final, uh, the highest value for that column, right? So this, uh, this uh, not bold, this just uh, this color values are the highest value for this uh, cell, right? So when you select in the final your label, you should select only this uh, bold colored value, right? <coughs> so is it okay? More probably you will get the question on this thing, right? You will get uh, uh, get something like this. So, so it's better to uh, do this uh, calculation by your own, right? So I hope you get some uh, sort of idea about how this hidden Markov model works, right? Then this Viterbi algorithm is very like a straightforward thing. You just have to practice it, right? Right. Uh, so this is this is the final backtracking process, right? So the one thing, so if you uh, in this algorithm, right, you can see that if you do some uh, some uh, uh, change on, uh, suppose this is uh, this calculate uh, not very uh, accurately, right? So the, this this thing will propagate to <coughs> all the all these values, right? This thing will propagate, right? So that's the one disadvantage actually, right? For for this, uh, there are only a uh, for this case you have only one value, right? You have you just have to add two values, this column and the that emission value. But in the other all cases, you you should take the transition values, emission values, and the previous value, right? If the previous value is uh, uh, incorrect, that will propagate throughout your uh, labeling process, right? So that's a very uh, serious thing, right? So that's the main uh, disadvantage on this thing, this algorithm, right? So, so the final, our 
label will look like this, right? For labeling purpose, I think it's better you should uh, only consider the highest value other than this, that, uh, <coughs> uh, this uh, headers, right? So if you consider the highest value, then that will obviously generate the correct label, right? So that's the end of our session, right? So, so please try to uh, go through this uh, table, right? So that's the only thing you should actually practice, right? Other things are for your information, right? Sorry for that, I, I couldn't uh, write on this uh, by mouse side, that's the thing, right? I just put the uh, values here, right? You can go through this slide, right? So you can uh, see the how these values are <coughs> uh, calculated, right? For this, I'll put some uh, more details if you want, right? So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask. We have around uh, five minutes, right? I'm having another lecture at three, so. If you have any questions, just please ask quickly. <coughs> right, uh, and the next day we'll uh, cover, if you have any questions, just uh, uh, let me know in the next lecture. So the next lecture will be the last lecture, right? So you, uh, I think your whole uh, university life, right? So <laughs> I'm going to uh, uh, do the lecture then, uh, I think, uh, and you having a quiz on uh, all the things up to be covered, right? So get please get ready for that, right? So okay, that's it. If you have any question, just ask, right? Uh, contact me, right? Uh, okay then. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. <clears throat>